Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Pavel Tikhamirov, and I'm software developer at Richosa. Previously, I was talking at uh, LPC about mounts, but today, different uh, idea, um, but still in crew. Uh, I want to talk about old known problem, like 10 years before, uh, in restoring process trees. Uh, Okay. No. Uh, first, I will have a brief overview what we do uh, when we restore process tree. Next, I will walk step by step over uh, improvement of algorithms to resolve simple cases. Then I will talk about the complex case, and in the end about the solution I propose for this case. Uh, so. Here's a brief overview. Uh, Can you reuse a headset or something? Because you're coming out very distorted. Oh, okay. I will try. Just a second. Or something, or? Just a second. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Is it better now? Not really. Or do I, or do I sound at all? We can still understand you. Just a little. Yeah. Okay, I will just talk closer. <laughs> okay, hope it becomes better. Uh, okay, uh, first thing to know is that Creo knows nothing about the history of process creation. Just nothing. We only see the final state. Processes can like die, fork clone in the middle and we don't know the order of those separations. On exit of processes, children can repent and uh, the weaker of uh, where they go uh, is different depending on different circumstances. And there is a special resource session. Uh, it's, uh, this resource is special because it can only be inherited and only be created by specific process session leader and uh, session leaders can actually have two resources. Uh, it can have born session which is born and then can do set seed and get another session. Uh, that's what we, we, we need to restore in Creo actually. Uh, here are simple uh, algorithms. Uh, the first uh, case is that we only have fork and set seed uh, for creating the process tree we want to dump. Uh, so we uh, can restore it with this simple algorithm, which just uh, for each process want to find if it needs to have born seed or not. Uh, for example, session leaders, as I already told, can have two seeds one with which they were born and the one to which they changed their seed. Uh, uh, and we uh, look for each process recursively uh, and check if it can inherit its seed from parent and if it's not, we set born seed and so on and so on. Uh, then we just traverse the process tree in process tree order, parent before child, and we fork children first from born seed, then process if it's session leader does set seed, and then we fork other children. Uh, note that we don't consider complex uh, cases of fork and clone, meaning that clone parent is not handled here, also pygmy space is not handled yet. Uh, this is the algorithm, and you can see on the picture that it is just simply works. On the left, we have uh, one tree with sessions colored, uh, with processes colored by, by their session. Uh, and on the right, we have the same tree with uh, two color uh, processes which need to have some born seed. For example, here we need to fork all those four processes here and only then change session for process two and then create here. Something like this. Uh, next step is to add exits to the picture, meaning that now processes can exit and their children would return to the reaper. That's why I also add pit name space to the picture. 
Uh, so we have one pin name space and what we previously had and exit. And now when processes exit, I, I use the same coloring as before. And if we conclude the bond seeds for each process, process one would have like three bond seed, which isn't possible. Only one bond seed is available for each process. Uh, and only session leaders can change their session. Uh, so we need to do something here, and that's how we improve the algorithm. Uh, here, uh, we just uh, need to remember that as processes now can die, we need to restore session leaders, uh, meaning that we can't create processes uh, with the same session if the session leader is dead. We need to add them to the picture as like helper processes and get session from them. Uh, we also set born seeds in the same manner, but except for init. Uh, you understand, understand why, because init uh, can have like multiple of them. And uh, next, we just uh, check for each branch of init, meaning each shoot of init. If it can inherit session from init, it means that it's okay. We can restore it like this. Uh, session or born session. And if it can't, it means that it has session leader somewhere and it was reparented from its uh, descendants. And we try to restore this dependency. We add helper process connected as a child to a session leader and uh, our process child of need is moved to this, to children of uh, this helper. We alter the tree in this way, and after that, we can fork processes like in previous algorithm, uh, handling born seeds and uh, stuff, and we would get some tree which is similar to what we want, but not yet ready. Uh, at the end, we kill, um, we wait for each process to exit, uh, which is helper, uh, and we get the resulting tree. All uh, branches which receive their session are apparently to need. Uh, I believe understanding this concept would be easier on the picture uh, on the next slide. And here I need to note that in Creel we actually have this implemented except for small parts and there are actually additional parts I don't put in this presentation because it would be too long uh, to, <laughs> uh, to talk. Yeah, and here's the example. Uh, the previous tree, it is restored like this. So we add, uh, for example, here session helper, we add helper and connect it to process which need to inherit. And after we uh, kill all helpers, the tree becomes exactly the same as it was on the previous slide. Exactly the same tree we want. So uh, the original tree in which we had uh, the one above. I call it the historical tree. Uh, it has all dead processes in it in, and shows the history of how it was created, actually. Uh, so in this tree, we have different topology to this one. Uh, because, yeah, our algorithm doesn't know the history of creation. It just recreates some version of it. And if we had some other dependency, I don't know which one, some dependency to inherit from process three to process six, for example, on this uh, restore algorithm, we wouldn't be able to handle it. But just probably we would have a problem in the future. Uh, okay, next step is to add nested pin name spaces to the picture. Also, uh, this example illustrates how we can enter a pin name space and uh, demonies uh, process uh, so that we bring some session from uh, uh, lower pinning space to upper pinning space. Uh, also note that on my slides, all pits and seats are from uh, root pinning space of container. Uh, so for this example, we would get this tree. And if we just use born seeds, and look on process six, it would have like five bone seeds, which is not possible again. So we need to somehow improve the algorithm again. Uh, and that's how it works. 
uh, for nested pigment spaces. So with nested pigment spaces, we still need to create session leaders for dead session leaders, which are not in tree, but we have processes of those sessions. But we need to find proper pigment space for them, meaning that we can have zeros on multi-level seed uh, of some uh, process from this seed, and we need to like uh, traverse the tree, uh, the pigment space tree up to find the proper pigment space where to create the session. Uh, and next, we just uh, do the same as we did in previous algorithm for each in process for in each pigment space. Uh, also, we go until next init or, uh, uh, okay, yeah, uh, we like see, uh, we watch on the tree uh, from first init and until uh, moving to next name space crossing across in the border. And we set one seed for this cut subtree and we uh, again repair the branches. Uh, but when we repair uh, meaning that I uh, need to somehow uh, fix the tree so that everyone can get their session. Uh, and here we can have like session leader in one pinning space and helper connecting us with this session leader uh, would be in our pinning space where we belong. And that's like sometimes a bit complex already, but it's still a simple case. Uh, so we fork the tree when we need uh, pigment space in it, we use clone new pit. When we need to enter pigment space, we use set S before forking. And after all processes are forked, we just kill all helpers and get desired tree like this. Here it's like really simple, but it can be more complex like this tree uh, there are a lot of processes in different pigment spaces with same section. This is the resulting tree for this example. And we need to create helpers really carefully. So we create helper in right pigment space so that after it dies, we repair it where we need to. That's how it works. Uh, here are some notes. Uh, we don't care about seeds on nested pigment space level and care only on root level because we have nice uh, tools to set pins on each level and after we have pins synchronized on each level seats would be synchronized section ids would be synchronized on each level too uh, but here is a, a link to my patch which tries to fix clone tree set teeth feature because it doesn't allow us in case we have like two pigment spaces nested in one each, one another and they belong to different username spaces in a container uh, that would be a problem because uh, set team doesn't work in this case it need to have all permissions uh, to set uh, all pins on each pigment space level but it doesn't have it because there are two different username spaces Please see a link if I have review, it would be nice. Uh, also need to mention that there are some different resources like process group, which are actually not only inherited, they can be just set to any other process group at any moment, but they become only inherited if we enter pigment spaces, but it's like a, a thing for a separate talk. Uh, also, uh, we don't uh, allow external seeds in our container, as you already mentioned, that only seeds created in a container live in a container. When we enter the container, we do set seeds all, set seed always. Uh, okay, next level of simple algorithm. Uh, let's add chilled subreapers to the picture. It is almost complex already, but in simple variant, chill subreapers are only set on uh, after the process was forked and never disabled, like Docker Shim does, for example, to catch processes. Uh, chill subreapers is a way to any process, not in uh, not only in means of pid name space, to get processes reparenting in their subtree. And uh, the algorithm to handle it, uh, in short, is just 
to handle it like even space he needs, uh, almost the same, but we don't have set methodology, so we should check both seeds uh, crossing uh, child sub reaper boundary because some sessions need to inherit uh, through child sub reapers. Uh, and we need to accurately handle creation of session leaders and stuff. We need to put them uh, sometimes under some shield sub reapers uh, properly uh, so that we can inherit from them so that they are not like disconnected with us and we wouldn't be able to modify tree the way we can inherit from them. And after killing helpers, get the desired one. Uh, so, for more information, you can get uh, see a uh, virtual the crew code. We have it implemented, but it's not in mainstream crew yet, uh, because in mainstream crew we don't have nested pin namespaces. We did it in virtual for Docker support in containers, and actually it's a bit uh, uh, complex already because when I was preparing this presentation, I found two issues in my code actually. <laughs> that's a funny thing. Uh, that's how sub repairs die, small picture which illustrates it, because if you have a sub reaper in parent, you not always repair to it like here, process 11 can repair to pin space, and that's good. Uh, uh, previously, uh, at some time before, we had a nature that process can like change uh, parent speed name space and that le led to some crazy pictures with chilled sub reapers and here's what the resulting tree is and to restore it we just basically need the same tree as was here in history I don't need to repeat it uh, and let's go to complex case already uh, so the complex case but on simple example here Child subreaders can be not only enabled but disabled too. So if the process enables and disables child subreaper in the middle of process tree creation, we can create almost arbitrary tree. In this example, process two is child subreaper and process six dies, seven are parents. Here uh, we disable child subreaper and kill process three and this repairs too. And we get this tree on the right. Uh, why it is complex? Uh, it is complex because we don't have certainty here. Uh, we don't know which session, which process was created first, process two or process four, but we clearly know that there is some order, either that way or another way, and we need to decide. Uh, there is also another example from 10 years ago, uh, it is in Russian, but you can clearly look on pictures and Google Translate uh, is good on this article. Uh, so there are like different examples of this uncertainty where we don't know in which order to create processes. And we, if we don't know the order, uh, there can be again some other resource which we need to inherit between two and four and we need to uh, like use information about all dependencies between all resources uh, on this store, which is like very hard. Uh, with child sub reapers again, we can create almost any tree. So we can reparent any uh, to we can reparent child to any of its ancestors. Uh, like it's a great power. It's very hard to predict how to restore the tree created with this power. And the clone parent flag is actually the same because it can be like uh, handled like a subcase of child sub reaper reparenting. It does pretty similar thing. Uh, and before fixes five and six, uh, you can look on links. We even had like a random behavior of child sub reapers. Thanks for them. Uh, we now at better uh, place already. Uh, and I have this tree, you can actually create it, no problem. S one is followed by two, two is followed by three, and again, n is followed by one, like a circle here. Uh, and such circle of dependencies are like a hell for crew. We don't know which one is first, how to decide. And if we have some 
some new dependency in future uh, about which we forgot uh, or don't know, uh, we would need to rewrite algorithm again. Uh, and what? And now let's go to solution. Uh, what I propose to fix this problem. Uh, Kaba is the abbreviation for closest live born ancestor, meaning that we don't want to save the historical tree, but we need to be need to save something close to historical tree to be able to know from where uh, processes came, from where they are reparented. And the implementation is pretty similar to what the normal process tree does. Uh, it's like the same, uh, but except for small changes. When process is forked, its cover is like real parent, same as in uh, normal process fork, but for uh, to handle clone parent case, we need to set it to current to actually know which process actually created us, from which one we inherit our resources. Uh, and also, uh, next step is when we uh, die, when processes die, in normal tree, we parent to repair. In Kaba tree, uh, not when die, but when the PID is released, when the process is released, when we wait for a pro waited for a process, its cover is changed to father, uh, no, uh, the children cover would be changed from cover to parents cover, 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 something like this. Uh, and also we need to handle threads uh, when, the pro when the thread dies, and we still have other threads, uh, not the process uh, dies completely, we need to move uh, Kaba children to the uh, thread leader. That's, that's pretty it for the algorithm. Uh, it has some other places, but uh, there it is like completely similar to the process tree. And we put this information into Procpid status so that each process can see its cover on each PID namespace level. Because again, zero is at the end. We need to be able to find even those dependencies. Uh, I sent the patch set version three. I have a link here. Uh, it has uh, those uh, colored changes already. And I also have an idea that we can enable cover tree only for processes like recursively uh, for PID namespace processes, uh, not on all uh, processes on the whole host like I do it now. But it is like if we really want performance, probably we should do this thing. Uh, this first node is for it. And here's the picture which shows us what information cover tree actually gives us. Uh, this is the process tree we see, and this is the cover tree. It shows, okay, we need to fork uh, process two first, and then process four, and uh, then those. Uh, I actually added the self-test, which illustrates this picture uh, where you can just test it and see how cover tree behaves. Uh, uh, I actually not yet implemented restore algorithm for crew. Uh, to use Kaba, but the general idea is here. We just follow Kaba tree on the store with small differences, like we need session leaders for uh, sessions where a session leader is dead. It is quite complex to put them into the right place in Kaba tree, but it's possible. Uh, and uh, we need uh, to put for each process which has parent not equal to cover, we need to put a uh, helper process to uh, this uh, process. Uh, after this process, uh, this helper process okay? uh, after this process would die, uh, children would return to, uh, after helper process would die, children would return to proper parent. And that's it, we do the same thing in this algorithm with born seeds for all processes as it, in first algorithm I've presented on first slides 
and then we will store processes according to this modified cover tree, uh, and then we kill helpers one by one, setting shoot sub reaper flags for real parent where we need this parent, uh, this process to be parent, and uh, that's it. That's just what we want to do in crew after we have carbon in mainstream. Uh, I have some notes here. Uh, cover is actually a good thing because it is self-restoring by design. If we restore the tree uh, of processes by cover, it would have the same cover tree. Uh, there are actually attempts to cl uh, create like uh, clear mathematical models to restore processes. Uh, but the problem with them that uh, in Creo uh, we have like pretty much hard coded uh, order of things. We just say, okay, let's first create processes, then create files, then create something else. But uh, in uh, mathematical algorithms, uh, it is important to consider all dependencies like initially and reorder all comments to create processes right from the beginning uh, and it would like create different order each time and it would be very hard to debug such a thing. Uh, so okay, in Linux we can get some new resources, new dependencies between them and yeah, it would be unclear how to define it like in clear mathematical model. Uh, but Kava gives us an ability to know as much as we can about process creation order so that we can make this order like in, to put it in steel and never change it. Um, something like this. Uh, also, why we don't care, what, why we don't take historical tree and uh, invent some Kava? Uh, because historical tree is affected by PID reuse. Uh, if like we have processes, if we have tree with dead processes in it, it would be hard to understand uh, children uh, when PID is reused and we have two processes with uh, the same PID. Something like this. Thank you a lot. Hope it's not too much crazy. Uh, I hope to have some feedback on it. Thank you. Okay, we've got like about two or three minutes before the next talk. I think Andre's got a question over there. Yeah, I have a few comments about this. This is the, one of the major problems that we have right now in Rio. It's a big mess in uh, our code, even without nested PID namespaces. So it's a good thing to fix. So my first question, I have to ask it because anyway, someone will ask it. Do we have other users for Kabatri? if we will merge them to the Linux kernel. I mean, uh, it's hard, hard to merge something that is specific for one project. Uh, that's a good question. Because actually we can have other users. Uh, sometimes, for example, the, the process can enter your, uh, some user can enter your hardware node uh, from like outer world uh, with our, via SSH and create some daemon process and just leave it there. And you with Kaba, you can understand that this process was created by this SSH, something like this. Not sure if it's too helpful, but probably it can it can be useful information for like admins to know which process is reparented from where. Okay. Uh, I mean, we need to describe this as a use cases in a patch set. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this one is in a patch set. I think, have you considered to, to build this cover tree in user space? Because it's too simple that you can create a small daemon that will subscribe for trace events and get events about new tasks, get events about the tasks that right? and build this Kaba tree in user space and you will not need to to add this crew specific feature to the kernel. All right, and, and we're out of time on this one. Um, you can probably chat on the um, matrix chat for now because well, you should be on there um, or yes. organize something afterwards. Thank you very much for this talk.